You're not going to want to miss this episode of the AI show where we learn all about ethically sourcing data for your machine learning projects. It's pretty buttoned up. Make sure you tune in. Hello and welcome to this episode of the AI show where we're going to learn about something called Project Trove. I've got two guests with me this time, Christian and Krishnan. Hello, my friends. Tell us who you are and what you do. Yeah, my name is Christian Jensberger. Um, I'm the program manager, manager, I guess, for this project. So um, I actually ran the team that's looking into this um, specifically to see what we can, we can do with this. Krishnan. And I'm Krishnan. I'm the program manager working on the Trove app and Marketplace, which I'm so excited to come here in front of you and talk about. So this is kind of a cool project name that tells me nothing about what it actually is. Can you help me out? What project? What is Project Trove? What can it do? What should I know about it? Sure, sure, absolutely. So Trove is a new type of marketplace for training data that you can use in AI and machine learning applications. As you know, there's so much machine learning and AI happening in the world today. And one of the things we constantly hear from every AI developer is, oh my God, I wish I had better data. I wish I had better data to build my AI and machine learning applications. So Trove is a solution to that problem. Trove is a marketplace where as an AI and a machine learning developer, you can uh, create a project asking for data. And then people who have the right data for you can actually come and contribute data to your project uh, and you pay them. And um, one of the key differences, and this is of course not a new idea, but one of the key differences is that with Trove, the people who actually contribute data as part of the marketplace um, get back money for their data, and they also get a transparent, private, and uh, ethical way to contribute data to your projects. This is way cool. Uh, I'm used to having free products where I go in there and really all they're selling is me. So this is really cool. If I'm understanding this right, you're creating a marketplace where people can sell data. And, and now that sounds, I'm wondering about like, End goal, vision, there's got to be some principles that you're setting. Because we want this to be ethical. How are you guarding this for it to be ethical? Christian, for you. Yeah, so a um, couple of things here. Um, I think one thing that's really important to differentiate is that people don't sell their data actually there. What they do is they license their data. So we actually have a license framework that allows you to license your data for specific use cases that the developer is um, actually advertising. Like they're going to go in there and they create a project and say like, hey, I'm using this data for this specific purpose. I need this data for this specific purpose. And then you license the data for that specific purpose, which means you still own your data. You own your photos. You just give it to them for that specific um, you know, use case. And then you can also give it for other use cases to other developers, if you like. It's in your control, right? And the idea here is really um, for us is to build this marketplace where the people with data are first. In a lot of places um, today, when you look at like, you know, there's things out there where you can contribute data, like, you know, services where you're the product, you don't know. Um, that's not built for, it's built for you, but actually built for advertisers mostly, you know. Um, and other places, it's like you get like a couple like cents for what you provide, and then you actually lose all your rights to the data, which is also not for the people with data first, right? And so we wanted to acknowledge that the people with data are instrumental to machine learning and artificial intelligence, and that they need to have a place where they can share in a safe way their data and license the data. And so we have five main principles that we follow with this. One is like transparency. So when you want to um, actually add a project into a marketplace, you have to be transparent and open of what for what the data is being used for. And for everybody that's involved can then look and look at that and see that. Um, there's control, which is like you get to decide who you want to um, license your data to for how like you know um, how much of that you want to license. You could say I have 20 photos, I just want to give one, and things like that, right? Um, there's fair compensation where we want to for you to make money with that. So you should actually get money for the data. Now, not everything is like $10, right? A photo might just be 20 cents because it really is just something that's super easy to gather, right? And it's not worth that much. But we want to make sure that like, you know, the price is fair, you know, so that if something is hard to gather, like it is more expensive and you can make more with it. But it's also a little more work, right? And maybe you, maybe it's also something that you just have, uh, but it's hard for others to get. So you're like um, in a niche, right, where you can make more money with your data. The other thing is enrichment. Um, we want to really um, allow them people to like, you know, build some sort of like 
career around that, like being able to like, you know, build a portfolio of the data, like be recognized for the contributions, things like that. And so we actually built into the app a rich profile where you can see like, you know, what you contributed, like feedback you got. You can also give feedback to the people that ask for the data. So it's really balanced, right? So it's not like, hey, they can give feedback to you and say how great you did or how bad you did, and you can never return the favor, (laughs) you know, for lack of a better term. (laughs) And the last thing is that connection. Connection is really about, hey, if you said were to ask for data and I have data, I can connect with you directly. I can go, hey, Seth, I need more information. What is going on? I'm happy to provide this, but I need to understand what you up to, who you are. And you can also always reach out to me as well. So there's really this connection where we want to make sure that people feel more like, you know, there's people on the other side, right? It's, it's not just a project, it's people. And it's people that work with each other. With the ultimate goal, really our ultimate goal is to make you as the data, like if you have data, right? make you feel part of a large like virtual team that contributed to this machine learning effort, right? And so that's really our goal. And um, that's what these principles are all rooted in. Really cool. So if, if I understand right, we have, I'm hearing a little echo. Hopefully we don't get that in the, in the show, but we have transparency, number one. Compensation, fair compensation, enrichment, and connection. So these are some pretty strong principles Mm-hmm. So is this like an idea of an, is this an idea of something we're setting up? I mean, is is this an actual thing that you can show me working? What do you say? Um, yeah, can I add sure. one more thing before Christian jumps into Please. showing some of this? Um, I really think like this is, this is, these are really strong principles, like you said, said, and the important piece here is really to really start thinking differently, right? And we want to be like, the ones to like show that. And we need people to participate in this market to see whether the way we think is actually resonating. So that's why everybody like who really, who f- thinks this is a great principles, you should participate. Yeah, and Krishna, I, hear you have a, a- I hear you have a demo, my friend. Is that true? Oh, yeah, no, Seth, that your question was amazing. And we really wanted to sort of make these principles uh, that Christian referred to more concrete. So I actually have a demo of the marketplace um, to show you. And um, I'm actually sharing my screen right now. Um, let me just get this out of the way. And you can actually see my screen, which is actually mirroring my, my phone app. Uh, and in the middle between Outlook and Teams, you'll actually see Project Trove, which is a real app uh, running on your phone. And so uh, when I uh, log into Trove, um, I'm signed in using my Microsoft account. Um, so if you're downloading the app for the first time, you'll have to sign in with the Microsoft account. But you can actually see how. Uh, as the Trove team, we've been working with several different teams that are actually collecting photos for their AI projects. So there's an example from Microsoft Research where um, they're collecting face masks um, from people to understand how face masks are being impacted in these current times. Um, it's a very relevant project to create a digital archive of like how face masks are used. Um, Another example from one of our customers um, is a developer called NextVPU. Uh, They are actually collecting photos of how you hold books, magazines, and newspapers in front of your eyes. And the reason they're doing this is because um, they are building a smart camera. camera. So they're building these glasses that can help the visually impaired uh, interpret books, magazines, and newspapers. And so the idea is that these photos will help train a software model that can recognize what's in your book or magazine or photo and then translate it uh, into your year uh, when you're wearing these smart glasses. Um, so it's pretty cool. There's like tons of um, different applications, whether it's optical character recognition or just trying to understand serial numbers and receipt data so that you can kind of um, automate some of these tedious tasks uh, using AI and machine learning. If you think this, about this, sorry, this, Seth, this is I sorry to interrupt, but this is really cool. Like, look, I have a, every time I do machine learning, it's like we all think about the models and the, how easy they are to build. But then we realize I don't have good data, but this is a way to actually ethically source good data where the people that are providing the data are in control of what they're doing. Absolutely. And actually, just to j- dig deeper into that aspect a little bit, uh, one of the things that Christian mentioned at the very beginning was uh, the idea of transparency. And uh, we take a lot of effort working with every AI developer to make sure that uh, we have a very clear, transparent description of how your photos are going to be used. So as a photo taker, if you have photos of books, magazines, and newspapers, for example, we clearly give you a, a, a notion of who's going to use your data 
uh, how they're going to be used, and exactly the kinds of photo requirements that will help this project the most. Can, can you pause um, there? I want to let's go back to the screen because I want to actually look at it. Can you scroll? Scroll down. So this is for the books and magazines. There's a description of what they want you to do. There's a, there's a little bit on what they're actually going to, how they're going to use it. And then the requirement. I love that. Be safe. And I mean, this is, this is really cool. The other thing also to add really quick to the screen is that when you scroll even further down, what you see is there's an easy way to actually ask a question if you have a question, because you might have a further question. And then there's also a very simple way to see the rights and responsibilities you have across the board, which is similar to like Creative Commons or things like that. But this is basically the core of what the license is about. Yeah, and this highlights the notion that, you know, it's your photos. As a contributor, you can upload the same photos for multiple projects, which means you own it. But the idea is that you can contribute your photos to this project uh, for a particular fee. And that is actually useful and will be used only as described above. So um, bringing that transparency and like that control uh, front and center is actually super important. Um, so one last thing I'll do is um, I have a few photos. So as a photo taker, if I wanted to pick one of these projects, um, oh, bingo, French fries. So I eat a lot of French fries. I don't know if you of know course. what I mean. <laughs> so I uh, th this is a project I can absolutely contribute to. And I can actually see like these photos are going to be used to train software that can identify and classify French fries for machine learning. So I look at these requirements. I say, oh yeah, no, I, I, can, I can be safe, no problem. I can send photos of French fries and I shouldn't include photos of people. That's great. So I hit send photos right here. I have the screen where I can add a few photos, uh, which basically opens my um, my camera row uh, on my phone. And you can see I have these French fries photos. So I can just quickly pick four of these. Um, and then I can click next, add a few photos, add a few details about my photo, which are actually super useful for developers trying to understand uh, biases in their data set. Um, and so I can just say, oh, they were just taken in Seattle uh, on my phone. Um, and I press submit. And then when I hit submit, all of the photos that I, um, oops, I seem, seem to be running into an issue, but all the photos that I um, selected will be submitted to the um, uh, to the project in itself. It wasn't an issue, you were logged out, man. You can't <laughs> be submitting stuff under someone else's alias. It's a feature, my friend. Of That's course. really cool for two reasons. Well, it's uncool for one reason, because I'm hungry, but it's cool because like there, there are so there's such a number of ethical things that you're looking at and addressing in the app. For example, bias. Where was it taken? Right. I mean, where yeah. is it? Like, if it's at nighttime, right? Uh, if it's in a certain location, right? That allows the data scientist to have an understanding of the source of the data, which is actually really, really cool. Yeah, and that that information um, travels with the data into like you know. To the, to the developer that's then using the data. It's always available for them too, so they can look at it. It's basically a sheet that's attached to the data. All right, so last question, because I want to make sure people know how to get started. If there's a data scientist out there that is thinking, boy, I would love to get some good, ethically sourced data that puts the users in control, and they're an AI developer, how would they, how would they go about getting started with this? Oh, all they have to do is go to aka.ms slash Trove Ad Project, and um, we'll be able to collect some details from you about the scenario, uh, why you're collecting photos, and how Trove can actually help you. And we'll work with you as an AI developer uh, to add your project so that your project could be featured in our list and you can start collecting photos from day one. Well, this has been awesome. Thank you so much for your time. If you're an AI developer and want to use this amazing stuff, go to aka.ms forward slash Tritrove. This has been another episode of the AI show where we learned all about ethically sourcing data and putting users in control. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Take care.